this video provides information on how to build a frame for use with our common talking character signs. These signs feature an inch and a half border allowing you to build a 2x4 frame for not only allowing it to be spaced so that when you use it for storage you'll have your LEDs or RGB nodes behind here, but it also provides the structural stability while it's mounted in your display. Now, to build this you will need several items. You'll need two 2x4 two 8 foot long boards. Uh, these are just a few dollars, usually about three dollars or less, uh, and we are going to cut them into two different lengths, two 46 inch and two 43 inches. Now these can be pressure treated, but because these items usually don't stay outside that long, they don't have to be. We have a few other items. We have here, Holiday Coro fender washers. You can buy these at the hardware store. I have gone ahead and just painted them black so that they'll disappear because the sign that we're going to be building is going to be black. And all they are is just regular fender washers. There are 12 of them here. I have 12 black regular drywall screws. And I have several wood screws. I have eight of these. And these wood screws just simply will go through here and hold the frame itself together. The drywall screws will hold the Coro to the frame itself. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started here. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to build a top and a bottom, and it doesn't really matter which one is which, so the 46 inch longs, long boards can be at the top or the bottom. All we're going to do is simply space these out. I'm going to take my 43 inch board here and I'm going to mount it or attach it to the 46 inch board. Now, I have pre drilled holes into the 46 inch board three quarters of an inch off the edge, and that just ensures that the wood won't be split. Okay, so we're going to take this board here and we're just going to lay it on a flat surface. Then using our wood screws, we're simply going to come over here and screw these two boards together. I'm just using a uh, you can see there's not much to it, just making sure that it remains flat. Okay, give this a little bit more there. Alright, so that's as easy as it was for the first one. Now, we've got a 43 here and a 46 here, so we're going to be putting a 43 at the top up here. Now when you cut them, you'll notice that we've got here a uh, knot in the board. And I'm just going to make sure that I pay, place the knot on the board when I actually go to mount it on the back. So you might want to make sure that when you're mounting it, or you're cutting your boards, that you're cutting out any knots where possible. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put the other... And we're going to go ahead and put the other one in on the bottom. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put the other one together and come right back. Alright, we've now completed the frame. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it so that the long end uh, of this frame is down at the bottom here and that the vertical portion here is a short stud. Now, when you get your coral, uh, there will be one face that has holes in it with no drawing and then there will be another face that has holes in it, but with drawing. Now, the bottom of your design is going to be inside of the 2x4. Now, that applies to not only this type, where we have mini lights, but also our RGB units. So, you want to make sure that when you're building it, you want to put the holes so that the individual lines that show where to put the lights is facing down into the 2x4s. Now, for our RGB designs, you have two options. You can either put the white up front, if you want a more reflective surface, or if it matches your house better, or you can put the black up front. Now, you'll put both layers. Don't try to use them separately. There's not enough hold if you do not put them together. So, you'll also see that along the edge here, there are holes drilled for mounting the Coro. 
Now, all we're going to do is simply line this up along with the frame. Make sure we've got it nice and even and that all the holes, if we're using RGB, are matching so that they're evenly spaced and that they're on top. Okay, we're going to put the washer, black side up in this case, simply just screw that down. And we're going to screw it down so that there's a moderate amount of pressure on top of Coro, but not too much just to severely crush the Coro. And we're, all we're going to do is go around there are 12 holes, putting a screw and a washer in each hole. And that is all that's required to build a frame for any of our talking characters. Now, let's take a look at the reverse side. So now that we have our design, you can see that we have all of our holes, and this is again the RGB version, and we have them marked. This wood frame allows you a location to screw your controllers to. It also allows you an easy way to mount it. You can either hang it, you can use other 2x4s, any other type of method allows you to easily screw to this sturdy frame. Also, when you have your lights mounted into it, it allows them to be behind or below the 2x4 section. So, that means if you lay these flat in your uh, garage or in your attic on the floor, they will remain flat and they won't put pressure on the lights that are mounted inside. And that's all there is to building a frame for a holiday coral animated character.